you uh, not in a self-deprecating way, but in a self-congratulatory way, talked about your influence on those uh, Warriors teams in 2012, 2013. That team played the Spurs in the second round, ultimately lost in six games. But that was the first time we really saw Steph and Clay in a big time playoff series against a great team and won a couple games where they sh- shot the shit out of the ball. As a teammate and as sort of a, 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 a front row bystander of, of a young Steph and Clay, could you ever have imagined the impact on the game, the amount of winning? Like, the it was so. It was the antithesis of how NBA basketball was won. And Chuck, you know, probably still thinks that jump shooting teams can't win championships, but clearly they can. Um, What did you sort of think back then about the ceiling and the impact that they could potentially have on the game of basketball? Can can I? We first of all, we lost one of those San Antonio games. I was like a negative twelve in two minutes, and the Warrior fans still bring this up, right? But I want to address this. Go back and watch the tape. Yeah, I missed a couple of free throws, but like I said, I was I played like fifty five games that year. My back was fucked up. Anyways, we're to get to this, right? In that series, Mark Jackson fucking stood on that podium and said it's the greatest shooting backcourt he in the history of the game of basketball. And Steph was in his fourth year and Clay was in his second, right? Because I think Steph had just signed that extension. One of the craziest extensions ever signed in in the game of basketball because he went from like a very good player to the best player, you know, in the NBA winning two MVPs. So like the amount of money difference, that also allowed them space to go sign the guys that they, Kevin. So did I see it coming? You didn't know what was coming. You didn't because you'd never seen it before. I was there when he broke the record, right? The first record. And you didn't think like I think it was like 250 maybe or something threes. You didn't think that the next year the fucker was going to shoot 400, make 400 threes or whatever. But I think it's a compliment to Steph. It was a compliment to Mark. It's a compliment to Clay. It's a compliment to the people, you know, even even Lakeup, you know, because as much as people I we all know the people inside know that the trade for for Clay and Kevin Love was I don't want to say imminent but it was a very real conversation and they were like well look the amount of threes that Kevin Love shoots is very similar to Clay and now we have a big that can shoot and we have st-. And it was like and and they like begged him to do not trade do not trade Clay do not and so like even then sometimes inactivity can be the best move Right. And so as an organization, everything that they did was beautiful. They crushed it, but no one saw it coming. No one saw it coming and no one truly knew how to fucking stop it when they got going. That's why they won 73 games. It was like, how do you stop this? There is no way to stop it. And so these guys, they put in so much work. Steph is listening to Steph's workout and I know how OCD you are. People don't understand the amount of energy that he has to use every single day it's 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 next level like even for athletes even for guys that do this for a living you're like this man has to run around for 48 minutes every single night doing what he does you don't see that coming and so it's a compliment to those guys to figure out an equation that no one ever has and they just dominated with it the freedom that they get to play with Mm -hmm. um it's a little envious if i'm being honest it's not jealous it's envious. Uh, I see jealousy. No, it's envious. It's jealousy. It's we also, continue. and we've discussed this on the broadcast before, it's also the fact that they play together. Mm-hmm. The best shots I ever got in my career in terms of open looks were when I was on the court with another high-volume 40% shooter. Mm-hmm. That's a fact. Yeah. There was a number of years where they, they had a, uh, a stat where it was like most open threes – taken in the nba this is second spectrum right the camera once the camera tracking got in there in 2013 2014 and it was like last three seasons the most open threes in the nba number one most wide open threes steph number two clay and you're like well how is that possible because like because they play together it's it's some of it is that i also we we touched on this with steph when he was on the pod in uh november there's so many what ifs like, what if Steph doesn't get injured? I'll, I'll give you what if the, Steph doesn't get injured? Yeah, and they doesn't sign like, and, I'll, and I'll he signs a, a bigger extension. They can't get Kevin. What if Clay doesn't actually sign a max extension on his rookie because he signed a set number, yeah. so they don't get Kevin? What if uh, they trade Steph instead of Monte for Andrew Bogut? 
What if Stan takes a job instead of Steve Kerr? What if Steve had taken the Knicks job? What if uh, they did end up trading Kevin for Clayton? Like, there's so many what ifs, and yeah. yet those st- guys are I'll still you, there. I'll give you, I'll give you one that people gloss over a lot. What if David Lee's not hurt to start that season? Mm. He was an all star. David Lee was the best power forward on the team. So they started with Draymond, and then they fucking are gangbusters. They get going. And at that point in time, they, like, they got to go to David Lee and say, hey, like, we're going to keep going with this lineup. And I don't know if you know David Lee. I know him well. Yeah. He, he was, he's not, not, he wasn't stoked about it. Like, you're stoked that you're winning, but you're also like, bro, like, you're not supposed to lose your starting job because of an injury. That, that's a pretty common thing. But they were rolling so much. They were rolling. I think so much. David was going into a contract year as well. Yeah, he was not. He was, yeah. I, and I, again, this is not a knock on David, but if he was healthy, Draymond doesn't get that start. They, he's not starting. And that's the beautiful thing about what they did. And in that year, Mark Jackson was the, like, because we had Jarrett Jack. So Jarrett Jack would run point and then Steph then Steph and Clay would be off the ball. And that allowed them to run around and the floor was going to be open. So they figured out we need guys that can handle the ball, Livingston, Iguodala, Draymond, so that these guys can go around. Since we're pissing off stands here, I stand by that I think Steph is a shooting guard. I don't think that he's a point guard. And that's not to knock him. You can be that position. I think Steph, his best version is off the ball best version of staff because of the space that he creates with his movement. Now on the ball, he's got one of the best handles. He's got all of this stuff. He can do it on the ball also. But I think if you look at the greatest shooter ever, all the threes and his amount that he plays off ball, he's a combo guard. But I would consider Steph more of a shooting guard because they have so many primary ball handlers around him that leads to their success. It can be Draymond. It could be Livingston. It can be Iguodala. Even Bogut handling in the pick and rolls for a five man is very, very versatile. So I would I also always would classify him because I like there were so many years where I would see that he wasn't the point guard for like 50% of the time. If you're the point guard 50%, and that was one of the criticisms. It's like Clay, or not Clay, but Chris Paul was like, Yeah, I'm guarding him, but he's not guarding me. Right. And so the point guards were kind of like a little, you know, like, wait a second, like he's switching out, they're doing this stuff. And it was intelligent basketball. But yeah, I think that Steph is a shooting guard. That that can play point, not a point guard that shoots. That's that that's my argument, and I love Steph. I think he is special. Like don't don't like I love because as a person, as a teammate, as a basketball player, and as an ambassador, I don't think that we could pick a better guy than Steph Curry. That's how special he is. When you came back, I forgot you were here. I know it happens sometimes. Actually, frequently. It's, it's um, because you're long winded. Yeah. I'm <laughs> very long with this podcast. No dead air. When, when you <laughs> when you come back when you come back with Cleveland. Um, was there a specific thing about those two that you noticed that was different when I, when I came back, uh, played them in the final, play them in the, um, no, I think their confidence, I don't want to say different, but I think I, when you win a championship, the next year, you're a better team. The next year you're, you're a better team because you, you've done that. You've gone to an intensity level mentally, emotionally, and physically that is very hard to get to. Right. And that's part of the reason why we talk about Braun and what he did for all those years with no rest and playing USA basketball and that. But when I got to them that next year, they won 73 games. There was no stopping them. There was, it was, they had figured out their lineup. They were, they were moving faster than the defense could react because they were so intuitive. And that's where Draymond changed the game because defensively he was the five, he was the communicator, he would kick people out, he would do all of the things that were needed. And so, as much as it's, they say Steph changed the game, I think he changed that with Clay and with Draymond. I think collectively they contributed because Steph, we believe, is an elite player, but he doesn't have that, that this success. It's like Michael Jordan with Scottie Pippen, right? He doesn't have that success, I think, without Draymond being a defensive player of the year, like, like one year and probably could have won it multiple years without him being that guy and without Clay maybe being – a top five shooter. And we both said it that like, I think clay has the prettiest shot that I, that I've seen. Right. Like, like that's me. So to have that collectively, they moved it to shooting teams could win. And that's what changed the game. Yes. Draymond talked about this on the podcast. I I really believe this. And Draymond probably gets it the worst out of those three guys. We're like, if he was on another team, he wouldn't be good. And you're, I, I I totally disagree with that. Draymond is so intelligent. Mm Mm-hmm defensively he's so good and he's so 
uh, intuitive offensively that I think on any team with good players, like Draymond is going to make a huge impact. So would Steph on any team. So would Clay on any team. 